And so I visited Fairhaven. Their open house was almost over, but they took me on a tour. They gave me a book called, I think, Like Water, written by um, McKay. His last name is McKay or Craig or whatever, but I ate it up like within a day or so. I read the whole thing and I, I felt like it described what my son needed. I have another son who would do great in a traditional school, but I'll get to him in a minute too, and my daughter as well, but my, my oldest son. And so um, I came home and I was like, honey, this is it. This is what Dylan needs. And my husband and I had, long story short, had probably one of our biggest fights over this philosophy mm -hmm. of setting my, our son totally free. My husband is an engineer, oh. has a degree in computer engineering and a degree in chemical engineering. It so. Is. Do the math on that one. So uh, me telling him that we're not going to teach him how to read. We're not going to teach him math. He's just going to do whatever he wants and just find himself did not fly with my, my beloved. So, <laughs> so um, one thing I've learned about marriage this is just a little side note is compromise is a beautiful thing. So we, we argued and we talked through it. Uh, my husband is my best friend. I love that he lets me express myself and I let him express himself and through that argument we created this philosophy where both of us could go I think I can do this it's half freedom and half classical education um and so half of the day is in class well we split the day the week in half half of the week they're in classical classes then half of the week they have complete freedom and but even the classes have traces of freedom it's not as rigorous as traditional school so like today is monday every monday is socratic seminar and we use touch tones the organization touch tones um to just have a seminar every monday where they're discussing like today we discussed um i think the cave from plato's republic and i think another group discussed the ethics part of the ethics um and so we discuss these small texts and even the, the little people do it. The little, little people do Aesop's fables and uh, the other ones do folk tales from different countries. And it's all um, leading to a, a, broad under, a broader worldview. And so we do that on Mondays and then they have math and then they have, um, and there's science and history from, from K to eighth grade, science and history is all project based. They, at the beginning of the year, um, they, they're given a list of topics they can cover because we want to make sure they're covering some of the broad brush uh, topics that the county or the state would want them to have. So, for example, if they're doing a history project, they can choose for the year to study government or world or American or U.S., African-American, Native American. We count African-American and Native American history as American history. So you can choose to study it through that lens as well. And then, um, and they do, they pick it and we order their textbooks based on the topic that they wanna cover and they, and they read through it and they choose topics that they wanna delve into on their own and read about during the week and research it. And then every Thursday, every single Thursday, they do a PowerPoint presentation on their topic. So there's no one lecturing them, but they're engaged in going deep into these topics they've chosen and teaching us um, what they're learning. So that's history. With science, um, we do the same thing. They, so it's not just choose anything. I, when, I, when I first started, it was like choose anything. And they would say, well, I'm doing my science on Pokemon. That's not, Pokemon is not science, sweetie. Well, take some type of a science to create him, but you didn't talk about that in your project. So that was the first year, seven years ago. You know, we learned through trial and error. So now we do the same thing, looking at what the state requires. And we came up with our topics. They can choose to study botany, earth science, astronomy, um, life sciences, physics, chemistry, all for the curriculum we have has um, textbooks that are connected, that are written for younger kids. K through eight, and they, they take those books home and they do the same thing as the history. They read through the book, they pick a topic of interest, and they teach us through a PowerPoint presentation. In addition to that is, and this is all independent, the science and the history in those grades, and I'll talk about high school in a minute, they're reading and learning for themselves. They really get into it. Then they also do an essay connected to the topic they present on. And that's really important because it solidifies. It's not just, oh, I just throw some pictures on and here's what I learned about this but they have to write an essay and a rubric is given for how that essay is put together 
And then because we're all online for COVID and we're actually going to stay online, I can talk about that in a little bit. Um, everything is turned into a portfolio so we can open up the portfolio and I can see what topics they've covered in the year in that subject area. And then math is pretty traditional, but it's taught again in a way with this dialogue. Do you need my help? Like students who don't need help don't have to sit and listen to a lecture. They can just, like my son doesn't pay any attention to the lecture. He just gets the book and just works through it at his own pace. And he's become very good at math. Um, all, all three of my kids have. And so, um, and it's just kind of not, we all have to be on page one. You know, if you're not on page one and still in the other section, then you're somehow not smart. You know, we look at it as everyone has to learn at their own pace and that needs to be respected. Um, we also have a strong policy of not holding kids back. I always say we're going to put it on the back end. And I, the reason why I say that is because I was one of those students who did poorly from pre-K through 11th grade. Like, and thank God I had teachers that would pass me by the skin of my teeth. But for whatever reason, my 12th grade year, the light bulb went off and I became like an honor student. I don't know, I don't know why, but, I, but I'm noticing this pattern that when kids are growing up, everyone develops at a different pace, but somewhere close to 18, it just kind of comes together. Every now and then, because you can't graduate from us until you have worked through some things and gotten through certain benchmarks, every now and then, we've only had two that this has happened, no one that this has happened, they stay an extra year, but they usually are ready by that extra year. So they may be late 18, 19, every now and then but but those students usually ask i'm not i'm not ready to graduate next year can i stay an extra year so it's again them feeling like you're not we don't feel like you're not smart we don't you, you can decide what works best for you and so um yeah so it's it's really been um a, a quite a journey and so then our high school um when they get to high school the it becomes a little bit more traditional and how we keep track of their grades because we know that they're running to go, most of them want to go to college and they would need a, a more traditional transcript you know what I mean and so um, they're taking all the traditional courses but again they have a lot of freedom of when they take it as long as it's not like for example they couldn't take algebra two and they haven't had algebra one and they'll understand that but they can decide to take geometry if they want to a little out of order because it's a little bit different, or if they want to do physical science or biology and different flip flop, you know, so we try to, and we actually consult with each high schooler, what classes do you want to take? And, oh, I think I had that last year. You're right. It's a discussion, not just you're going to do this. And, and there's, and they are in charge of their journey. Um, and, um, and so then all of this happens Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesdays only. And we have breaks scattered throughout each class. Um, so that they can have time to just woosa and just relax. And then Thursday is projects and what we call the Stillwater Cafe, which is the time for them to just meet with staff to, if there's work they feel like they need help in, I mean, just sit in this quiet space and work. And then Friday, um, we go nature study. We go hiking every Friday as a group. And those who are out of state go hiking where they are and they send us pictures to show. And that nature study has been really inspired by um, Cedar Song, the Cedar Song Way, which is a nature study uh, school, a nature school started by, um, I think her name is Ann Kinney. She passed away, um, but she created a beautiful program for going out and just learning from nature freely, um, observing, engaging with it, running around in it, playing in it, and enjoying nature. And we found that to be therapeutic as well. And so we were a brick and mortar school for six, five of our, five and a half of our years. COVID came and we turned it to an online program and that this, the kids did a great job of creating an online community. And we thought it was temporary and we found out this is working. We started enrolling students out of state. Um, we, we are, we're about to be accredited by middle states as an online school. Uh, and we're really excited about that. Um, past the candidacy, we've scheduled our school visit and, um, and we have students in New York, Florida and Texas and more to come. Um, and, and the parents like it because number one, they feel like their children are safe from COVID. That's not quite under control yet. 
and we don't know when that's going to happen. But they've also noticed a, um, the peer pressure, just some other distractions that happen in school aren't there. So right now, and they like that we still get together during the week, where there's still time for them to connect with friends. So our out-of-state families are now introducing their friends in their states to join. So they're forming like pods in their state that hopefully will join our school and then they can do their own gatherings and hikes in their state. Um, and so we said, okay, well, we'll stay. And we voted to stay on another year. We're just gonna keep reassessing each year. But so far we feel very comfortable staying on another year. Um, as even everybody else around us is kind of has, has a lot of trepidation about going back in the building and things not quite under control with the virus, but we have a system that is just really consistent and really works. And we place as much emphasis on freedom as we do the, the academic part that we offer.